In the fleeting dance of life, where time slips through our fingers like grains of sand, we are confronted with the profound significance of last words. These parting phrases carry a great importance, as they are capable of summarizing one's entire life in a single sentence. But at times, they can allude to a much darker story, hidden beneath the veil of death. That's right guys, I'm Aiden, and today we're delving into the top 5 most haunting last words ever recorded. Number 5 is Audrey. Audrey. I'm bleeding. Brandon Mason Lawson, born 1986 in Texas, met Ladessa Lofton, his common law wife in high school, whom he would have three children with. Brandon was a hardworking man and devoted father, working long hours at the oil fields in order to provide for his family. However, he was looking to get a new job. He used to struggle with frequent substance use, but as of six months before he uttered his last words, he was clean. On the night of August 8th, 2013, Lawson and his common law wife had a heated argument. The fight started because Ladessa was worried about the father of her children, who was working 60 plus hours a week and was not around often enough to see their three kids. Additionally, Ladessa was suspicious of Brandon, as he had not come home the night before and she thought that he might have relapsed and was addicted to substances again. In order to cool down from the heated disagreement, the couple separated themselves from one another, with Ladessa staying at home and Brandon wanting to stay at his father's place. Brandon lived three hours away from his father, but he still insisted on going, and left his home in his Ford F-150 at around midnight. What Brandon and the rest of the world didn't know was that this would be the last time anyone would see him ever again. On his way to his dad's, Brandon ran out of gas, so he had to pull over on Route 277 and call his brother Kyle, who lived only a mile away from Brandon's home, and ask him to bring him gas. During this call, Brandon told his brother that he was being chased by three threatening men. Kyle didn't believe him, asking him if he was on drugs or hallucinating. Worried, Brandon's brother brought his wife, Audrey, and their four-year-old to pick up a gas can and bring it to him. Though, when they got to Lawson's location, they found only his truck parked on the side of the road with no driver in sight. A local deputy showed up not long after Kyle and his family as a truck reported Brandon's parked vehicle for obstructing traffic. And this is where things start to get creepy. Brandon called his brother shortly after the deputy's arrival and told him, I can see you, I'm right here. Yet neither Kyle nor the deputy could see him anywhere. Initially, Kyle assumed Brandon was hiding from the officer, as there was an outstanding warrant for his arrest that was issued to him eight years ago. However, this is likely untrue, as Brandon called 911 right after hanging up on his brother and receiving no response from calling his wife, who had gone to sleep by now. And here's the audio of that 911 call. 911 emergency. Yes, I'm in the middle of the field. It's like we're just pushing guys over. Right here going towards Javelin on both sides. My truck ran out of gas. There's one car here. and I checked it to the woods. Please hurry. Okay, now run that by me. No, we're not talking to him. I actually ran into him. Ah, you ran into him. Okay. After this, you can hear other voices in the background telling Brandon to get up, and then the sound of shots. The call ended with Brandon faintly saying, help me. After making his 911 call, Brandon called his brother five times and was faced with no response. He then called his brother's wife, Audrey, and said, Audrey, Audrey, I'm bleeding. A chilling cry for help that ultimately went unanswered. An act is Brandon's last known words. Any calls made to Brandon's phone after this went directly to voicemail, including a call back from the 911 dispatcher he spoke with. Brandon was never seen or heard from again after this, even after consistent searches around the area from law enforcement. The mystery of his vanishing remains unsolved to this day, with not a single shred of evidence being found besides Lawson's abandoned car. We can only fear the worst when it comes to the true fate of Brandon Lawson, and hope that someday he will return to his family alive and well. Next up at number four, I'm putting dinner on. California resident William Sierzen was last seen on January 26th, 2017 in Santa Clarita Valley where he resided. On that day, he left his home in the morning and seemingly went about his normal daily routine. However, as the day progressed, Will would suddenly vanish. And at about 4.30 p.m., William called his wife Linda and told her that he was putting dinner on, what he wouldn't know to be his last words ever. The 58-year-old man was in a chipper mood that day, especially when he finished cooking a rotisserie chicken for his beloved wife. But when Linda returned turned home less than two hours after his last call to her, she found the house empty, with the chicken cooked and the oven turned off. Her husband's wallet, keys, coat, and all his personal effects were still in the house, with no credit cards or money missing from the wallet. Even the couple's dog was in the house, but William was nowhere to be found. To this day, William Sierzen remains missing, despite the many search efforts of many locals and police. In December of 2018, a human skull was found just down the street of the Sierzen household, with police hopeful to identify the skull and discover a cause of death. 
Unfortunately, the skull led to a literal dead end and all hope was lost in finding the answers to William's disappearance. But in May of 2022, the answers to why and how were finally found. William's nephew, Daniel, pleaded guilty to accidentally taking his uncle's life and admitted to disposing of his body in a trash bin. He claimed that his uncle punched him in the face during an argument and that when he hit his uncle back, he fell and struck his head. Daniel was charged for the crime and sent to jail for 11 years. While answers were finally found, and that's great, it certainly made any future Thanksgivings very awkward. You guys have big awkward dinners with your family too? If you do, let me know why in the comments. Let's go back in time a little for number three's last words, don't be afraid. Charles the 12th of Sweden, also known as Carl the 12th, the Swedish meteor, or my favorite name of his, Carolus Rex, which is just King Charles in Latin, but it still sounds cool, was king of Sweden from 1697 to 1718. Now, for those who don't know a thing about Swedish history, Charles the 12th was actually an incredible leader and warrior. Even in his teenage years, he was able to drive away a powerful alliance of Russia, Poland, Saxony, and Denmark. And at the Battle of Narva, was able to lead an army outnumbered four to one in a blizzard and still claimed victory. However, he would get too greedy upon invading Russia and suffer a debilitating injury to his foot in battle, which eventually led to the loss of Swedish land and the construction of St. Petersburg atop the taken cities. This would cause a snowball effect, leading to a slew of lost battles for the Swedish meteor. In an attempt to regain some of his momentum, the young king would invade Danish-occupied Norway in hopes of shifting the tides of war. But it would be this decision that ultimately led Carolus Rex to his untimely demise. Charles was at the front lines of his invasion of Norway, supported by 40,000 men. He laid siege to the hilltop fortress of Fredriston, a crucial asset for his losing war against his Nordic neighbors. In one of the many trenches formed just outside the fortress, it would be then that Charles would pop his head out for a better look at the battlefield and exclaim, don't be afraid, to his Swedish comrades. And in almost an instant, Charles would drop to the ground, with a projectile going right through the distinguished king's Head. The irony is not lost on anyone though, until you look a little deeper into the cause of death. The trajectory of the armament came from beside him, directly, and later autopsies made centuries later points to evidence of it coming from point blank range. If this is to be believed, that means that the Swedish king's death was not caused by the toils of war, but by a traitor within his own army. And trust me, nothing scarier than someone you trust betraying you. I still get chills when I think about how my parents lied about the tooth fairy existing. My deepest apologies and regrets to anyone finding that out for the first time, although don't worry. It gets better. It is theorized that within the Swedish government, there was a plot devised against King Charles's life by Frederick I of Sweden, which obviously succeeded considering it ended with the king being, well, you know. Next up at number two, it's not an aircraft. Frederick Valentik, a 20 year old pilot, met a mysterious and tragic end on October 21st, 1978, during a flight over Australia's Bass Strait between Tasmania and the Australian mainland. This flight was something he had done countless times, and it had become a routine for him even. Frederick was known to be a very talented pilot, who had extensive knowledge on all kinds of aircrafts, although his knowledge was truly put to the test on the fateful evening of his final words. Everything started to go wrong when Valentik raised to air traffic control that he was being followed by an unidentified aircraft, which was moving in bizarre ways that he'd never seen before. Upon checking Frederick's location, air traffic control found no evidence of any other planes or other flying machines, but the concerned pilot persisted. He would continue to claim that this unidentified flying object was trailing him. He described it as long, metallic, and with a series of bright green lights. He emphasized its strange shape and how it was moving at impossibly fast speeds. Air traffic control tried reasoning with Fred, telling him that it could be a military aircraft or a commercial flight. But even with his vast knowledge of aircrafts, Fred would continue to claim that this was something he'd never seen before in his entire life. Getting more and more frightful, Valentik reported that the UFO was now hovering above him, orbiting his position. When air traffic control asked for a further explanation, Frederick would only utter, it's not an aircraft, and would then cut communications after a harsh metal scraping noise was heard. Upon looking for a crashed aircraft or any evidence of the Australian pilot's claims, they could not be found. Frederick's disappearance quickly became a famous story of alien encounters, and with the recent congressional hearing confirming the existence of UFOs on Earth, it has become quite plausible. If you've got a fear of flying, congrats. I've just added getting your entire plane sucked up and destroyed by a UFO to your list of things to worry about while on an airplane. Sorry. And the number one spot for most haunting last words ever recorded comes from the namesake of my favorite Sufjan Stevens song, those last words being kiss my ass. 
Now you might be wondering why those are the most haunting last words. And if you didn't get it from my niche alternative folk music hint, they come from the infamous John Wayne Gacy. Gacy was one of America's most notorious killers, responsible for the heinous deaths of at least 33 young men in the 1970s. Gacy was known for essaying and taking the lives of young men, something he would do regularly after getting out of prison for taking advantage of one of his co-workers. He would pick up random individuals off the street or bus stations, promising employment, money, or just to share some drinks. Those who accepted his offer would be taken back to his house, where he would do unspeakable things to them. He would do this for years, amassing a collection of victims. This was until December 21st, 1978, where he would finally be caught for all his terrible crimes and sent to prison. And on May 10th, 1994, Gacy was given lethal injection at the Stateville Correctional Center in Illinois. His final moments and last words sent chills down the spines of those who witnessed his demise, showing zero remorse for the tens of young men's lives that he took. Truly a horrifying look into the twisted mind of a remorseless killer. And on that grim note, this video must come to an end. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to like the video or dislike it uh, if you want. I'm not your dad. Subscribe and let me know in the comments what your last words would be. See you in the next one.